So after we have seen now in the first part of the tutorial how to create your own layers and what for example a GCN layer is and a GET layer, we now look at how we can actually train models on specific graph um, datasets or graph tasks. Before we start that, uh, I want shortly to introduce a new package, um, yet another package, but this is really just that in, if you're interested in building your own graph neural networks, there are multiple packages out there in libraries, and I would really recommend you using them. Why? Because these ones are really highly optimized. So if you've seen, we use right now a JC matrix in our implementations above, and that is not really scaling up to a lot of um, or big graphs in their size. While PyTorch Geometric, which is here the package we use, for example, uses an edge list as input. And this can be implemented much more efficiently, and a lot of people have worked on it, so you can trust it that it's quite efficient itself. In the first cell we just imported here, so below I will then introduce um, a few things of PyTorch Geometric. It basically implements our graph net, uh, layers we usually have used. It implements uh, how to handle datasets and how to batch graphs, for example. Um, provides a data sets like Tor uh, Torch Vision. However, so this package is really just for graph neural networks and we'll also just use it here in tutorial 7. So the next tutorials we will not use it anymore. However, if you're interested in building your own genets, that's a package you might want to look into. So PyTorch Geometric defines here also a .nn package and a .data package. In the .nn package we again have different layers. So for example, you see here we have a GCN conf, the get conf, but also more layers. One I use here also is the graph conf. The graph conf is basically a GCN layer, however, with a separate weight matrix for the self connections. So you see below here, this is uh, how it is originally implemented, that you have a weight matrix now for itself, plus then a weight matrix for all the messages of the neighbors. Besides that, it is identical to the GCN in the sense that you can now in PyTorch uh, geometric choose between if you want to average them, um, the messages, if you want to sum them, or how you want to do that. This just gives you a little bit more flexibility, but otherwise GCN and GraphConf are very similar. I just here have again a dictionary to use our hyperparameters better. Now we can already start at looking at experiments with graph structures. We will look here at three different experiment types, namely node-level tasks, edge-level tasks, and graph-level tasks. First one we look at is node-level tasks, which means that we give, get a big um, graph, and we want to predict something per node, for example, a class per node. Uh, often this is called semi-supervised node classification, because from the graph, we get a set of nodes which are labeled and we use to train on, while then different nodes in, the, um, in our graph are not labeled and these ones have to be predicted during testing. The data set we will use here is a very popular one called COA, and COA is a citation network, meaning that it has about 2,700 scientific publications and edges between nodes represent here citations from one uh, paper to another. Therefore, we get this graph of a lot of nodes. Our task is then to take a publication um, which has as features a bag of words, meaning that it has just a binary vector of ones and zeros, which indicate if a specific word has appeared in uh, the publication or not. So this is a very cheap representation of language. Um, while then the output is a classification into seven classes. So just is, is a specific publication about a specific topic then. That helps us to look at the papers which have been cited, the paper, or which the paper cites. So either way, because this shows what uh, possible uh, topic it is about. PyTorch Geometric, we can just load the data set here by um, saying, well, like, dataset name is Coa, and we can shortly look at what the dataset looks like. So in PyTorch Geometric, you get a data object back, 
which has an edge index, which is basically our edge list. So we have 10,000 edges of tuples here because we have always two nodes we connect with, right? And then we have a test train and validation mask, which basically indicates which nodes are we using for training, which for validation, which for testing. X are then the input features and Y are the labels. This is also how we will access it. Our GNN model we will use here is then nothing else than a sequence of GCN layers or basically GNN layers in general. So any of the dictionary you have defined above here with then always a will applied after it. So you see here we just apply GNN layer, we will do potential dropout if we want, continue, and a final GNN layer to predict the output. So that is quite simple. Well, then in the input here, we just have to call L, H, uh, X and H index so that Python geometric knows what is actually the graph structure. Um, a good practice, especially in this node level task, is to have a baseline um, which just looks at the nodes itself. So the question is actually, does the graph information help or not? And we want to check that by just having an MLP which looks at each node independently, so at the back of words, input in the independently and therefore to predict the label for each node independently. And then we will compare this one with our gene and to see if actually the graph information helps in these tasks. Below here I have then a lightning module to just define our training step, a validation step and test step. Um, it's very simple. So we take our model, we forward the data through the model depending on the mode we have. So if it's a training, validation or test step, we will then calculate the loss correspondingly to these nodes and calculate the accuracy. So that's basically all we use here. And we use the SGD optimizers um, because we will have a quite small model, which is rather there to overfit instead of uh, generalize too much. Um, finally, we have here the training function again, nothing new. Um, so if, again, if you're not very familiar with PyTorch lighting, maybe take a closer look, but otherwise it is very simple, similar. One difference, however, we use here a batch size of one. Why? Well, because our uh, data set just has one big graph, right? So therefore we don't really have a batch size. If you have very large graphs where you could do something like subgraph batching, but we don't have to do it here because our graph is not too large. Finally, we can then first train the MLP. Here we have a, a pre-trained model, so we can just load the pre-trained model and put, uh, let it predict. And there you see while it actually overfits on the training data set, it performs quite poorly on the test set. So 60% accuracy on the test while trainer is almost 100% is not that good. If we look at the gene N, however, the gene N performs uh, much better. It performs at 82%. For um, our prediction, where you see that actually genomes helped quite a lot, especially when you want to generalize. Maybe also something interesting is that we have a very small hidden size here, so a hidden size of 16. Why is that? So you can imagine if you have very large graphs, it is very expensive to have them in memory, especially if you have large hidden sizes. Therefore, you often see it uses smaller hidden sizes, and in this case, it is actually enough. To use this small hidden size. This is what we've seen now as a node level task. Um, regarding the edge level task, I don't have an experiment here itself because otherwise the notebook again also gets too long. However, the edge level tasks are linked predictions. So meaning that we have that graph, we push it through some GCN layers or GNN layers, and then want to predict whether between two nodes there might be an edge even if it's not in the graph or not. So you can imagine as application, for example, social networks, where um, you want to predict whether two people in a social network would want to be friends or not. So these are the friend proposals on Facebook you see, or um, who to follow on Twitter and so on. These are uh, link prediction tasks. And this you can also do if you are interested. Here are some more um, tutorials or directions where you can look at. The final type of um, task we will look at are graph uh, level tasks, meaning that we are now actually given smaller graphs. However, we want to do a classification or regression on this 
uh, graph level. So we have given a graph and for example have to classify this whole graph into one or two classes. One popular application uh, for which that is used is molecule um, prediction or molecule property prediction. What is that? So on the left here you see how a typical molecule can look like and we can represent that as a graph by just looking at the atoms as nodes and bonds between atoms as edges. Therefore we can also have different um, node types, so node categories because you have different atom types, but you can also have different edges because between few atoms you can also have a, a double bond or a triple bond, um, which just means basically more connections. However, you might sometimes also want to have a different weight for these different edges. In our case we will not look at it, but there are techniques like relational gene ends, which just have a GCN, but with different uh, weights for different edge categories. So the task in molecule generation of the one we will use here is that given a molecule, we want to predict what is here called the mutagenic effect on the specific gram-negative bacterium. So that is now a um, a task from biology, however, we can just look at it as a task we want to optimize on. Right? So we will apply a gene N on these graphs, perform a pooling over all nodes, which usually is then mean pooling, and then try to predict on this pooled instances um, the class of a graph. And then the gene N helps us to look at the structure of a graph and then predict our final category. Again, in PyTorch Geometric, we have data sets prepared for that. We can look at here a few things. So now um, you actually see it, PyTorch Geometric still stores. Also, we have now 188 graphs, this whole thing as a big graph. Why that? Well, you can always take multiple graphs, just store the list of nodes, store of edges, but don't have any connections between these separate graphs. Right. Therefore, we have one big graph. But in this big graph, you have multiple subgraphs which are independent of each other. And this is actually the same um, you do. And this is also what PyTorch Geometric uses for batching. Um, another good thing is always to check the average label. So here we have a binary classification. And if you just uh, print the average label, so take all the labels and take a mean, you see if you have a balanced or imbalanced data set. Here, yeah. luckily, we have a Rather balanced one, uh, graph datasets often have a more imbalanced one. If you have an imbalanced one, then you have to do a lot of tricks um, to get it running well. Um, as we have also so little uh, graphs, so only 188, we'll use 150 of them for training and uh, the rest of them for testing. So we will not have a validation set, but use the test set actually as validation set. But it's not necessarily a good practice. Still, it helps us just now to look at the small data set and still work with it. As I said, the batching of PyTorch Geometric works nothing else than adding them to big graphs. So if I have here two smaller graphs, I add them here to big adjacency metrics, where actually these parts between the graphs are zeros, and the nodes I can just stack. This way, it's quite simple for us to actually train the model here. We will use here a larger batch size, 64 is quite large, but still we have a very small data set, therefore this a large batch size is still working. We can shortly look at the batch, so you get the intuition of what is in there. Between the edge attributes, edge index and so on, you now see we also have a batch object. This batch object basically tells us to which subgraph each node belongs, and this is important if we do a pooling, right, if we want to do mean pooling over the nodes, now we always just want to do the pooling over the subgraph nodes. So we don't want to do one pooling over all the graphs, because then we can predict on a graph level task. Finally here, so our gene N model is nothing else than the gene N model we have seen before. Just now here with the mean pooling, which takes these batch indices as input, and then predict just the outputs by a linear layer. So this is nothing surprising or complicated here. Finally, I have here again a lightning module, which does nothing else than take the graph, 
put it through the model and perform binary classification. So again, if you're interested, take a closer look, but there's nothing too surprising here. Finally, we again have a PyTorch Lightning trainer, um, which trains now our model. And then finally, we can actually train it and look at the performance. So as you have seen, the data set is quite small. However, our model performs quite well on the test set. So here actually the test performance of 92%, uh, percent, which is quite good, considering that we had such a small data set of 150 to train on and then test on 30. The smaller training performance here is rather by chance, uh, because we did also early stopping at this point. So this example shows you now how you can actually perform graph-level predictions uh, with genes. Therefore, we come here to our conclusion. So in this tutorial, we have seen how to implement two different gene n layers, namely GCNs and uh, GGET, so basically graph attention. Uh, these implementations, please take a closer look. So this just helps you to understand the theory, how were they actually um, as an intuition, how were they motivated, and what can they do for you. We have also seen that you, there are a lot of applications you can apply to, that there are node level, edge level, and graph level tasks, and how you can do that. For node level, just have a gene n and predict per node. For edge level, you would always have the output of all the nodes and would have a function on two nodes to predict whether an edge is likely between them or not. And the final one, the graph level task, takes also a gene n, takes then a pooling over all the nodes in a graph, and predicts finally the class or in the regression the score. This way, uh, you hopefully have understood a little bit better gene ends. And gene ends are actually a topic which is still increasing in popularity over years. So hopefully you will actually see more and more progress over the next years. And it is quite still a very interesting topic.